Hi, this is pre-calc review for semester two. Uh, what I'll do is I'll try to make a series of video notes. This one will be analytic trig. And <clears throat> what happens with this is that it's just kind of a teaser. So I'm going to go through some examples just to get you going again. And hopefully it's, oh, yeah. But if it's not, oh, yeah, then you might have to go back to uh, other videos and other lessons in order to see what's going on there and more in depth. All right, so the topics for this video, analytic trig. We got identities, simplifying expressions, prove or verify identities, solve equations using factoring and multiple angle solutions, more identities, and then nested trig and inverse problems, build the triangle type problems. All right, so here we go. In section 5.1, what we did was we went through all of these identities. And so we have these. So you need to know the reciprocal identities, quotient identities, Pythagorean identities, co-function identities, and even odd identities. I'm not even going to go through those since you should already know them. So what we want to do is then we want to try to simplify some of these expressions. So if you look at example number one there, you look at something like this and to simplify a lot of people want to change it over to sine and cosine. But really what we want to do is put these two terms together. In order to do that, we need common denominators. So if, in looking at these things, also when you see the secant x minus 1 or any trig function minus 1, it's partner in a lot of those Pythagorean identities is going to be the secant x plus 1, or whatever the trig value is, plus 1. So with this, I try to keep these together. And to get a common denominator, we go secant x plus 1, secant x plus 1, and same over here but it's going to be the secant x minus 1. And if we expand this out or put this into the numerators, I get secant x minus 1. And then this is a minus secant x plus 1 all over. Now, if I expand those out, that's going to be the secant squared x. And the middle term is going to drop out because it's a difference of squares. And then it's going to be minus 1. And so simplifying this numerator then, you can see that the secant drops out. This is minus 1, minus 1, so I get a negative 2 all over. Well, what is the secant squared x minus 1 the same thing as? You go to this identity right here, and you can see that here's secant squared. Well, if I got secant squared minus 1, that just brings this 1 over to the other side. So what I'm left with is tangent squared. This secant squared x minus 1 is going to be the same thing as the tangent squared. And then you can leave it like that, or else we can bring it back to the cotangent. OK, so that's what you have. That's simplifying. Common denominators put things together. Go look at those different rules on those sheets on how to try to simplify. Then we have verify the identity for example number 2. This is similar to simplifying, but I need to get one side to look like the other side. Here are the steps for verifying identity. You can only work on one side of the equality. And it says at a time, but you should only work on one side. Can't move terms from side to side, and you can't multiply or divide both sides by a term. Try to work on the most difficult side first. Try all these things. And if you have to, try uh, convert to sines and cosines. But get in there and try something whenever you're verifying one of these identities. So for this one, when I'm looking at it, I'm going to try to uh, work on the harder side. Well, it's hard to see what the harder side is. But to me, I can combine these two a lot easier than to try to get this one and split it up into a plus sign and to get it to look like this side. So I'm going to work on this side here. So I, in this case, I am going to change it over to sine and cosine. So the tangent is going to be sine theta over cosine theta plus cosine theta over sine of theta. And that's equal to this side. I don't change things. And remember, you only work on one side at a time. If I get a common denominator here, then i got to multiply both top and bottom by the sine, and this one by the cosine. So my denominator is sine, cosine, theta. And my numerator is now going to be sine squared Oh, we like this. Sine squared plus cosine squared. What is that equivalent to? Well, that's a 1. So I get 1 over the sine theta 
cosine theta, and that would be then my secant, 1 over cosine secant, and this one would be the cosecant, and that's what I started off with. They're in reverse order, but that should be okay. And then I'm all done. So I verified that identity. So remember, work on one side exclusively and show that one side is equal to the other. If you do get stuck, you can start working on this side, see which one works out. But in the end, I need to see all the work down one side equivalent to the other side. Okay? Then example three. If we want to do something like this, solve with factoring. When I see this, this kind of sets up like a quadratic. The only problem is that this term right here is not the same as this term right here. However, we can easily switch this over to all cosine by using the Pythagorean identity. So this could be 1 minus the cosine squared x plus 3 cosine x minus 3 is equal to 0. Simplify. I get this quadratic. Now this looks a lot like 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 is equal to 0. And why I say that is because I can do this. Change all those because I like my leading coefficient to be positive, and it's equal to 0, so I have no problem with that. But this looks like this quadratic. So if I can factor this quadratic, I should be able to factor this one here too. So that's what I'm going to do. 2 cosine of x, and then cosine of x. And then I need factors of 1 that will get me to negative 3. Well, that's only going to be minus 1, minus 1. And that's equal to 0. So that means that this factor has to equal 0, or this factor has to equal 0. So cosine of x is equal to 1 half, or cosine of x is equal to 1. What values does that work at? Well, for this one, cosine of x between 0 and 2 pi is equal to 1 half. That would be this one and this one, those two angles. So it's going to be either pi over 3, or else it's going to be 5 pi over 3. And then for this one, cosine of x equaling 1, well, that would be at 2 pi or 0. Uh, this one, usually we use a round bracket, so we would just put the 0, not the 2 pi. Okay? So those would be my three values. So how about example number 4? If I want to solve this type of problem, sine of 3x is equal to negative 1 half. Well, this is a multiple angle solution. So what happens is that uh, if I graph a normal sine curve, it would look like this. If I do sine of 3x, it's going to look like this, three times as fast. And so if I shoot across a negative 1 half, I'm going to get three times the amount of solutions as I would here. So what we have to do is account for that. So if I do this, this is like having sine of 3x equals negative 1 half. This 3x, you can think of it as being, for instance, like a theta. And if I solve this out for theta, my angle measurements for this being negative 1 half, sine being negative 1 half, would be those two parts of the bow tie. And so this would be 7 pi over 6. And it also would be 11 pi over 6. But hold the phone. I said that I'm going to get three times as many solutions as I normally do. So what happens with this is that I need to go around again. So if I went around to that one right there, that would be 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi, which is 12 pi over 6. So I'm going to get 19 pi over 6. And if I go 2 pi additionally to this one, that would be 23 pi over 6. I got to keep on going. I need a couple more because I need six of these. And so I'm going to go around 2 pi more from this one, which would be 41 pi over 6, and then 2 pi over uh, 2 pi more than this one would be adding tw um, 12 onto this one would be I know I had something going wrong here. This should be, I can't add, that should be 31. 31 pi, and then if I add 12 to this one, it would be 35 pi over 6. So all these angles are equivalent to what we call theta. But theta is the same thing as 3x. 
So I put the 3x there, all of these angle measurements, so I, uh, this piece right here. So 3x is equal to all these things. So if I want to solve for x, i got to divide everything by 3. So x is going to be equal to 7 pi over, if I divide that, it's going to be 18, 11 pi over 18, and so on. And looking at this, I can also do this graphically just to see what's going on. I said that my wave's going three times as fast. This is 0 to 2 pi. Yeah, I got three separate waves there. And so if I shoot across the negative 1 half, how many solutions do I have? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. There you go. So we're going to have six different solutions. That's what we found. You could find this intersection. You can find all these intersections. This one right here is just the first one that I found. But that should be equivalent to your first value that you have on your sheet, which is 7 pi over 18. So those should be equivalent, and then you can find the rest of those if you need to. So you could do it analytically like we did here, or else you can also do it graphically. Now we got example number five here. Find the sine of 5 pi over 6. Now with this one, what happens is that 5 pi over 6 is not one of our nice trig values. So what we want to use is one of our sum angle formulas to sort this out. So if you remember the sine of alpha plus beta, sine minus alpha plus beta, cosine tangent, all these things are orientated a little bit differently. You've got to pay attention to the plus and minuses here and here, and the values, trig values here. But you need to know those things, or put them on a note card if the teacher allows you to do that. So what I do for this one, uh, a lot of times they ask you one of these type problems, take this 5 pi over 12 and turn it into a sum or a difference of two of the angles that we do know, which would be divided by 4, divided by um, 6, or divided by 3, so on. So if I take 5 pi over 12, 5 pi over 12 is the same thing as 3 pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 12. Now i got to check, are those two of the angles that we know and love? This would be pi over 4, and then this would be pi over 6. Sure enough, there we go. So this is the same thing as sine of pi over 4 plus pi over 6. So what I do is I go over here and use one of my sum angle formulas. I'm going to use the positive one. So I'm going to be using the positive here. And then it's going to be equal to sine times the cosine plus the sine Wrong. I didn't put it in yet. There it is. Sine of pi over 6 times the cosine of pi over 4. All right. And then you can simplify all those. So this is square root of 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. And sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. And cosine square root of 2 over 2, which is equal to the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. Okay, there's your solution. So that's using the sum angle to figure out one of those problems. Now, uh, if we do use one of the double angle formulas, the double angle formulas came from the sum angle formula. So here, I want to prove that the cosine of 2u is equal to the cosine squared minus the sine squared. So what we do is we go ahead and use one of these other formulas that's up here. If I can see it, there it is. There's my cosine alpha plus beta. Well, in this case... Alpha and beta are both u. So if I go cosine of u plus u and plug this in, it's going to be the cosine of u times the cosine of u. And then I need a minus there. Oh, this comes out very easily. Okay, so this is how we would prove one of these things. This one is very easy. So the cosine of... 2u is equal to cosine squared of u minus the sine squared of u. Now to get these other ones, all you have to use is, for instance, 1 minus sine squared is equal to the cosine squared. Simplify, you get this one, and so on. Okay, this one, given the sine is equal to uh, 5 over 13, and we're in the second quadrant, find the other five trig values. This one's kind of an additional example, but I want to just make sure that you got this down. With this, we can build a right triangle here and use the sine. This is first quadrant, but that's okay. So if I go 5 over 13, that would be the opposite over hypotenuse, where this height would be 5. If you recognize this, this is going to be 12. 
since I'm in the second quadrant, however, that's going to mean that I'm going to be over here someplace. And so this, this point right here would be negative 12, 5. Okay? So that's actually the triangle that I'm looking at for this. So if I want to read off all the other values for this thing, uh, for instance, the cosine. The cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So this is going to be negative 12 thirteenths. Second quadrant, cosine, negative, good. Tangent is going to be the opposite over adjacent, so I get 5 over 12. But it's negative again because I am in the second quadrant. And then I'm going to have the secant, which is the reciprocal of this and the cotangent, which is the reciprocal of this. And then don't forget the cosecant. Cosecant is the reciprocal of this, 13 over 5. Okay, so those are the other five trig values. I assume you're good at that, but I want to do that. So if I do this arctan thing here, uh, simplify the cosine of the arctan of 5 over x. Now if I do this, we don't pay too much attention with domains and things like that with this. Maybe we should, but we just want you to maybe try to simplify this. So what we do is we take the inside and build a triangle with that. I know that I have Sokotoa. So if I'm doing the tangent, that's opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to take this and call it the opposite, and I'm going to take this and call it the adjacent. So this is going to be 5 over x. If I figure out my hypotenuse, this is going to be x squared plus 25 square root. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Take the square root. There we go. Now, once we've built our triangle, what we do is we go and take the outside information and read off of the triangle for this angle theta. So the cosine is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So in simplifying this, this is going to be X over the square root of X squared plus 25. There you go. Okay? So that's how you simplify these. Build the triangle with the inside information. Read it off with the outside information. All right, this is the first part. I hope this helps. And skip around to these things wherever you do need help and try to figure out those examples. Thanks. Bye.